The main menu bar in Flash Professional is full of a variety of options and commands to help us work effectively within the program. This lesson provides a look at the main menu, focusing on commonly needed functionality. So here we see the Flash Professional CS6 authoring environment. And within the application window here, up top, we can see the menu bar. There are many, many options within the menu bar, and we're not going to go over every single one, but I will point out those options which are particularly useful when working in Flash Professional. So here we have the file menu, and this allows us to do things like create new documents, open documents, save, and so forth. But of particular interest are these publish settings down here. These settings allow us to choose a variety of publish settings, whether we're targeting Flash Player, or Air, Flash Lite, or something else entirely. You can see here that there are actually a number of different options for each of these pieces, and also a number of dialogues, things such as action script settings, can be opened from here as well and adjusted. Within our edit menu, we have a lot to do with copy, cut, paste, and so forth. But of particular interest down here is the preferences. Preferences is going to open for us a preferences dialog. And here is where we can set all of our particular application preferences for anything from general things like whether the welcome screen launches or not when you start up Flash Professional to action script, different warnings, and even how Photoshop and Illustrator file imports work. Under the view menu, we have things like turning the pasteboard on and off, what sort of preview mode you want to use, whether to use outlines, to anti-alias text, and so forth. And this would be useful if you've got a lot of stuff going on on the stage and it's slowing down Flash Professional. This usually doesn't happen much anymore. It's sort of a legacy feature, but it's still very good to know about. We also have here the ability to turn rulers on and off if we're measuring things very specifically. We can also go in and show the grid. And the grid is going to help us when we go through and are trying to line things up very specifically. We can also adjust our guides. So if we use guides to line things up and sort of partition off our stage, we can show our guides here. We can lock the guides or even edit guides or clear any of the guides that we've already created. If I create some guides here by simply pulling them down or across from the rulers, we can see how they appear and I'll be able to go in here and actually clear those guides. Also under here is snapping. So snapping allows us to have objects snap to particular either other objects or guides, the grid itself snapping to pixels. This just allows us to be able to line up our objects in a much more stringent manner. And you can see here we can edit snapping and even go into advanced to say how we want it to snap in particular pixels to the border or to particular objects and so forth. We then have the insert menu and the insert menu mostly has to do with the creation of new symbols or the creation of tweens on the timeline and tweens are basic ways of creating animation when you're dealing with the timeline. We can also create numerous scenes from here if we want to insert different scenes. Scenes are a way to break up the main timeline into manageable pieces. And then within the timeline itself, we can do things like add layers, add layer folders, and also deal with frames and keyframes. Under our modify menu, we can modify the document properties. So if I choose this, 
we can choose the width and height of our stage, background color, frame rate, and so forth. We can also modify a number of different things in here in regard to bitmaps on the stage, symbol instances, shapes, combining objects, using things like union, intersect, punch and crop. We can also modify timeline properties here. Things like reversing frames, converting things to keyframes, so forth and so on. We then have our basic transform, arrange, and alignment tools here as well. And here's where we can also group or ungroup objects. And we can see that each, or almost each one of these particular commands also has a keyboard shortcut assigned to it as well. So this is a good way of getting to know these keyboard shortcuts. Within our text menu, we can specify different things like font, size or style. We can also choose alignment settings from here, different letter spacings, whether to increase, decrease, or reset those letter spacings. And we can also check spelling from here. One of the really important things when working with text is the embedding of fonts. And from this font embedding command, we can open up the font embedding dialog and specify specific font sets. And directly underneath here, we can see the commands that already exist within Flash Professional. And these are the commands right here that actually ship with Flash Professional CS6. Next, we have the control menu item, and this allows us to control playback. So we have things like play, rewind. It's mostly stuff to deal with the timeline. We also, though, are able to test our movie from here, and this is very important because we can choose to test the movie within Flash Professional, within the browser, or if we're using an Air project, we can actually use the Air Debug Launcher on the desktop, use it on mobile, or simply test via a connected USB device. Debug has some very similar controls as Control does. We can debug the movie using Flash Professional, using the Air Debug Launcher on desktop or mobile, or we can debug the device over USB. When we choose debug, we then have control over a number of different things, such as breakpoints, and when we hit a breakpoint, whether to continue to end the debug session, we can also step in over and out, so forth and so on. If you're not familiar with breakpoints, Breakpoints are simply ways to pause code execution as you're testing your movie. This all mostly has to do when dealing with action script. Then we have window. Window allows us to either show or hide any of the different panels that we have in Flash Professional CS6. We can also see we have extensions here, such as Cooler. So if I wanted to add Cooler to my Essentials workspace, I could choose that from here. And then it'll bring up my Cooler panel. I could then go and dock this, just like any other panel, and it would open up for me. So there are a number of different panels here that you can have a look at. We can also manage our workspaces from here or switch between different projects. Lastly, we have our help menu item where we can actually access the Flash help, go to the Flash support center, get the latest Flash player, or a number of other things. One that's particularly useful if you're using Air is the ability now to manage the Air SDK from the help menu. So this has been a quick overview of the different menu items available in Flash Professional CS6.